My name is Tom Crawford. I'm very proud to live in Washington County and to teach math here at Hagerstown Community Question. College. Question. 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 Question.
are cheating the government and therefore cheating us? And how would you address that? It's a very important point. Part of the savings that we want to get in our health care system is to crack down on fraud and abuse, to have much stronger enforcements against those who are committing fraud within our health care system. What, I want to just caution people, though, because I think we overuse that term. I'm not here to defend the doctors, but I can tell you I've met with enough doctors to know that they really try to get the right care for their patients and get frustrated with HMOs and private insurance companies and with the public plans because they believe their patients need more care than the payer wants to pay for, and they try to make it justified under the guidance. To me, that's a doctor trying to do what's right for you, and I wouldn't characterize that as fraud. When there is fraud, we go after it, and we prosecute it and hold the people accountable. Thank you, sir. This gentleman at this microphone. The President has said on a number of occasions that senior citizens would not be denied procedures. The question never answered is when would the seniors get those procedures? In a week or a year or two? With approximately 45 million people coming out of the program, isn't it inevitable that all Americans will end up on a waiting list just like they are in other countries? That's right. The number of specialist doctors that we have in America, the, we, we, are, we don't have a real shortage on a per capita basis of those that are needed for surgical procedures or the more complicated types of, of, of medicines. Those, those cases come forward. When someone needs an operation, that case enters our system. It's the ones that don't enter our system that will now enter our system are those who are going to need preventive health care, primary care, the type of, of treatments that will keep them healthy. That's where we have the real shortages. And in answer to the earlier question, the real priority on public investment is to get more trained people in primary care, open up more qualified health centers so that communities can get access to the type of primary and preventive care and, 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 and less expensive care so that we can avoid as many operations and as many of the costly procedures. But I don't think we have a shortage of capacity in America. Thank you. We do have time for a few more questions. So this gentleman at this microphone. I have a fairly simple question. Um, you said that in the bill there will be provisions to make sure that insurers cannot deny your coverage because of pre-existing conditions, yes. and also that they can't rescind your care. They do some care rescission sometimes. Are there any plans to deal with potential loopholes that might come out of this? Say, you say they can't deny me care, they can't deny me coverage because I have pre-existing condition, but they can cover my rates, which is effectively denying me care, denying me coverage. Are there provisions to deal with these potential loopholes that might come out? It's a great question because we're going to continue to rely primarily on the state regulators to enforce the rules, including the federal requirements for health insurance. But we have the self-funded plans where there is a difficulty today. We will be putting into this, I'm going to try to put into this bill. It's not in any of the bills that have been reported. But do we put in what's known as Patients' Bill of Rights? so that there are effective ways that you can challenge arbitrary actions by payers, whether they be, again, a public plan or a private plan, so that you will have effective ways to enforce your rights if you're denied coverage or if they won't cover a particular uh, procedure uh, or if they, they have set up unreasonable rules for emergency care. We want to have a protection system in place that's enforceable and will work with the states to make sure that it's done. 